This is a Word document, and this is an HTML document that through the eyes of a web browser looks like a Word document. Notable points of difference, HTML documents look good on smaller screens, are styled with cascading style sheets, and are found at the end of a URL. HTML itself stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and is a programming language that we'll come to understand by taking a look at the anatomy of the quotation. Key points of interest include the opening quotation mark, the closing quotation mark, and in the middle, some contents that we deduce is the transcription of spoken word, as that's what it means to be wrapped between the opening and closing quotation marks. HTML works much the same. We have opening tags, corresponding closing tags, note the forward slash, which together are called the parent tags to the children content contained within. HTML tags come in three flavors, containers, typographic, and novelty. Container tags organize or enclose contents. Typographic tags determine the hierarchy of text importance, and novelty tags serve miscellaneous purposes such as image displays, interactive inputs, buttons, and anchor tags for links. Note that the input and image tags are self-closing as they do not have subcontents. To build an HTML page, we begin with the HTML container tags, and then we have the body tags to contain all the visible page contents. For the invisible page meta information, we have the head tags, and within the body, just like a Word document, we have the header, main, and footer container tags. This is the basic skeletal structure of nearly every HTML document on the internet. From the skeleton, we can build a huge myriad of web applications using a custom arrangement of reusable container tags that divide sections of content on our web page. For bigger sections, we subsection the contents into subdivisions that contain any combination of further nested divisions, typography tags, or any one of our novelty tags. There are numerous tags not covered in this video, but these 20% of tags do 80% of the work. You can find out more about tags here. Opening tags alone can have attributes. Attributes go here. Some attributes can be totally custom, others are built in, such as the style attribute. We can use this to give an element a color, a background color, text decoration, padding, and more. This is known as inline styling. If we wanted to cascade this style across every typography tag, we don't have to add it as an attribute to every tag, and instead we use CSS or cascading style sheets. CSS styles go within the style tags, which represent invisible meta information about the page, so they go within the head tags. We style a tag by selecting it and then adding one or more styles within the curly braces. The style cascades across every instance of that tag. To be more selective with your styles, we can use classes. Classes can be added as an attribute to any tag, and you can have more than one class act on a particular tag. We select classes to style using the period and then the name of the tag. These classes will override any styles set by the generic tag selector. We can be even more specific with our styles using the ID selection. ID is another attribute we can have on a tag, and an ID has to be totally unique throughout our entire document. We can select an ID to style using the pound key and then the ID. These styles override any set by the generic tag selector and the class selector. We can apply the same set of styles to numerous selectors by comma separating the selectors, and we can also be very specific with our styles using combination selectors. For example, this selects all the paragraph tags contained within a tag with a class paragraph container. So now we have an HTML document. Theoretically, it should look good. We've styled it, so how do we see it? For local development, simply drag and drop your file onto your Chrome browser and voila, you can see your web page. To deploy it to the internet, it's much the same. We're going to log into Netlify, deploy a site, drag and drop it, and voila, we have a live website with a URL that we can share with our family and friends. 